know, we get some big butterflies in West Yorkshire. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. Now, in this uh, week's video, I'm going to photograph a flower. Uh, I'm a bit of a loose end, and I thought it's a good day to go out and use my pinhole camera. And that's the, the camera I'm going to use to take the photograph of this flower. Now, this picture you can see here, I took this about two years ago, using this same camera, but a different focal length, uh, and photograph these days is looking upwards towards the sky. Uh, that uh, that video went down very well, and uh, I sold the a picture to somebody in America, so I'm very pleased about that. Well, this time, using this uh, 045 pinhole camera, I'm going to photograph the daisies looking down on them. And I've changed the focal length. Um, in the previous uh, picture that you've just seen, I used it at the 75mm setting. For this picture, I'm going to use it at 25mm, and that is super wide. You get a really wide area, and you'll see how close I have to get to the subject to get the effect that I'm after. Uh, the film that I've put in the 045 is the uh, Ilford FP4, and once again, it's a 25mm focal length, and the f-stop is f138. Now, the way I'm going to meter the scene is use my Seconic L758D light meter. And you will see in previous videos that uh, a lot of the time I use uh, the incident light reading mode where it's measuring light falling onto the subject. But for this uh, picture, I'm not going to use that because I don't think it's going to give me the correct exposure. I'm going to use a spot meter and that will enable me to place the zone that I want the brightest part of the flower to fall on. Uh, if I don't, uh, if I if I use the instant light reader, you'll see it's very difficult to get the meter into the uh, into the scene, and it's not going to read the light falling onto the subject. So I have to use the spot meter. Spot meter is absolutely fantastic for uh, uh, you know for you to look at a scene, and once you've metered off one area, you know that that zone is going to fall at zone five always meters at zone 5 and then you can use that as a datum point to move the zones about. Now how I'm going to work it on this meter is it's got two ISO buttons. The first one is for setting the film's ISO. The second one is to put e exposure compensation in and I'm going to set it up so that uh, once I've taken the light reading I press that button there and it will give me two and a half stops more exposure. So it'll move that zone 5 to zone seven, seven and a half, and that's where I want the brightest part of the uh, the flowers to fall. So I'll get the camera set up and uh, show you uh, how I, how I use the light meter, and I'll show you how close you have to get with this 25 millimeter super wide uh, pinhole camera to the subject to get a, an effective photograph. One other thing, uh, Dougie, come here, Doug, come here, come here. For those that uh, are interested in dogs, you saw my little dog a year ago, he's just a year old and this is him now, look how he's grown. Little Dougie, he's been a little uh, treasure for us, aren't you, eh? Are you going to come with him when I take this picture, eh? No? Okay then. Right, go set up and take the picture. So these are the uh, flowers that I'm going to photograph with the 045 pinhole camera. And I'm going to use the pinhole um, camera with the one uh, panel and that will give me a focal length of 25mm f138 and that is extreme wide angle. And what I'm hoping to get the effect is that I'm going to get the flowers in the centre of the picture and then uh, because it's so wide we're going to get this vignette into the edges and it's a bit like the, the, the uh, flowers are bursting to the side. That's the effect I'm hoping to get. Um, so I've got to position the camera in a way where I'm not getting too much of the foliage in the background because that will be too black. I just want to fill the central part of the image with the flowers. Now, as I said previously, uh, I, I could use the incident uh, light, light meet, metering mode where you use the dome and the light uh, goes into that dome and gives you an average exposure. Most of the time it works great, but for this I want to use a spot meter because I want to place the zones. I want these petals uh, to be quite bright and I want to place them round about zone 7, zone 7.5 and, and the only way that I can do that is by using the spot meter. When I spot meter these bright areas the meter will always give me um, an average grey 
18% grey, which is round about zone 5. But I don't, the flowers don't want to be uh, a zone 5 grey, they want to be round about zone 7, zone 7.5. Seven so I take a meter reading with the, with the spot meter off the brightest part of the petal, knowing that it's zone 5, and then overexposed by 2.5 stops, and that will place it two, sto two and a half stops higher, it will place that zone on zone seven and a half and that will give me the density in the negative to keep these flowers um, nice and bright. So the way I'm going to do that is take a meter reading. So I'm just going to pause the video. Now I know there are people out there that understand uh, the principles of using a spot meter and how to place zones but this is just to clarify for those that uh, don't fully understand or find uh, find using a spot meter uh, confusing when trying to place zones. As I said in uh, previously in the video that uh, I tend to use the incident light reading a lot but in this case it wouldn't have worked because I would have had to place the dome underneath the uh, pinhole camera and it wouldn't have measured the light falling onto the subject uh, correctly. So the spot meter was the way to go. Now you have to remember with the spot meter that wherever you point it, whether it's a light subject, a dark subject, it will always give you a zone 5, a middle grey reading. But that's great because it gives you a datum point to work from. And it allows you to uh, control the tones by using exposure. More exposure will shift the tones up the scale, make them lighter. Uh, less exposure will sh shift the tones down the scale and make them darker. In this case, I want it to go brighter. So I pointed it at the brightest part of the petal. It's not pure white, but I want it brighter. And I've overexposed by two and a half stops. And that moves that zone five reading from zone five up the scale, two and a half stops, to place that petal between zone seven and zone eight. And the reason why we can shift the tones up and down the scale is simple. Overexposure creates lighter prints and underexposure creates darker prints. Now with experience using a spot meter you can pre-visualize scenes because once you know where one zone is falling you can take light readings from others and see the difference differences in exposure and you can actually uh, with practice pre-visualize how your picture or the end uh, product is going to look. So the, the, the spot meter is a, a, a great tool and uh, it's, it's something that's going to give you accurate exposures once you uh, grasp the concept of m using exposure to move the tones up and down the scale. So I hope you didn't find that confusing and it helps you when you go out with you uh, with your spot meter again. And that's giving me half a second at f22. Now I'm meeting f22 because obviously my meter won't go down to f138 so I've, I've created a chart like this and as you can see on this chart the uh, pinhole size at the top 20 uh, focal length 25 millimeter f-stop 138 and on the left side is the uh, half a second exposure and in yellow at the side of it is the 19 and a half seconds the actual exposure uh, f-138 uh, so uh, the exposure then for that will be uh, 20 seconds rounding it up but then I've got to take into consideration a reciprocity failure. So again, I look at my phone, uh, find Ilford FP4, put the 20 seconds in, and that's given me 43 seconds exposure. So the, ex the exposure is 43 seconds. Now, I've just got to try and get the composition. It's all a bit of guesswork, this. But I think I want to come further forward with the pinhole camera. And then... Just tilt it up a little bit. Swing it round. A little bit further forward. Now it does seem really, really extremely close, but this uh, pinhole is so wide, uh, it won't look as close as what it is here now. Um, you can get a heck of a lot in with this pinhole at 25mm, so you do have to get close. So I've just got to hope for a little bit of a lull in the wind. I don't mind a little bit of movement, it all adds to the effect. And then uh, take the exposure. I'll use the phone to take the exposure. The reciprocity timer 
has that on it. Don't know if you can see that in the video here. Four to three seconds. So I'll take out the dark slide. And then time the exposure. Coming up to the end time. And stop the exposure, close the shutter, dark slide in, black facing out. And hopefully that's got that picture. So that's it, the fun and joy of pinhole photography. It's a great way of keeping your interest in photography rather than using what you call normal cameras because you know. Uh, you get a different look, a different feel to the pictures, the more artwork than um, you know, normal photographs where the more record shots uh, and they are great fun to use. The fact that you've, got, uh, you've not got a viewfinder, once you get used to it it's not a problem. You get used to the pinhole size and how far and near you can get to the subject and uh, it's all the anticipation and the setting up that's the fun about it. And then if you develop the, when you develop the negatives and they've turned out, uh, it's really, really a, a satisfying way to take pictures. Now the 045 pinhole camera, there are other 4x5 uh, pinhole cameras out there, but this is the one that I use uh, at the 25mm setting. I know it's extremely wide and um, I'm hoping in this picture to get the central portion of the picture uh, with most of the flowers in and then I know... Uh, using this pinhole uh, which is F138 uh, it's going to vignette at the sides and we're going to get this effect of the uh, the, the flowers you know being pulled uh, from the centre to the ed the edges that's what I'm hoping but the the advantage of using uh, 4x5 um, cameras like this quiet <laughs> my phone uh, the advantage of using these cameras is that uh, you can go out and just do as I've done here, just take one photograph and then go back and, and get the uh, the sheet of film developed. Whereas if you're using, uh, say, medium format pinhole cameras or even 35mm, you've got to use up that whole roll before you can um, uh, see the negatives. Uh, with these you can go out and shoot one, two, three, four, five, depending on what you want. So it's, it's a big advantage. So I'm going to go back now into the office and get this one sheet of FP4 developed. And I'll show you the developer that I'm going to use and how I'm going to develop to get the maximum uh, quality out of this picture. I'm not after a sharpness because you're not going to get it uh, from a pinhole camera. But you can improve on the quality that the pinhole gives uh, to make the picture that little bit better. So fingers crossed, develop the negative and see if it's turned out. Right, I'll show you the uh, developer that I'm using. Uh, the tank that I'm putting the 4x5 sheet film in and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the uh, dilution. So this is the developer that I'm going to use and it's called Pyrocat HD. It's a two part developer when you mix up you mix up part A and part B. It's a very versatile and economical developer and depending on the dilutions that you use you can develop in many different ways. I'm going to develop in a way that I picked uh, I picked the, the, uh, the tip up from uh, a chap called John Finch. I'll leave a link to his website in the description. It's a great learning resource on all things to do with uh, films and developers. So on his website he suggests uh, using uh, Paracat HD. As he, he calls it there a stand development but I'd call it more semi-stand. Where you mix up 2 mils of part A and 2, two mils of part B. Mix it in 500 mils uh, of water. And bring it up to temperature around about 20 degrees with with the stand and semi stand a temperature is not critical so if you're a couple of degrees out it's not going to make a, hardly any difference and then develop the negative for 45 minutes so you would pour the uh, developer into the tank uh, agitate for the first 30 seconds continuously and then uh, 10 seconds agitation every 10 minutes till the end time and then stop and, and fix as normal uh, before you pour the developer into the tank, uh, he also suggests pre-soaking the film at 20 degrees centigrade uh, in distilled water. 
uh, I didn't have distilled water, I just used normal water and left it at, uh, just to stand there and soak uh, for five minutes before I poured the developer in. The one thing to be careful with uh, using these two part developers not to contaminate part B into part A else you ruin the developer. So always use uh, syringes that are marked A and B and never use A in B or B in A. You don't want to uh, contaminate the developer. Uh, so that's the developer I'm going to use. The, um, the tank that I'm going to use, you've seen this before, is the Stearman Press SP445 tank. It's a great tank because it only takes uh, 500 mils of solution to develop a, to develop a 4x5 sheet of film. Uh, you can get four sheets into this, uh, two sheets on one holder, and how you load the film, if I can do this at this angle, is in complete darkness obviously, you slip the film into the holder, as I say with the emulsion side facing outwards, and once it's in the holder like that, place it into the tank, and put the lid on, and you're, you're ready to start your development process. So that's the developer I'm going to use and that's the tank. So you might uh, be thinking why bother uh, doing a, a semi-stand development on a picture taken with a pinhole camera. It's not like we're, we've used a macro lens to get that real sharpness. But you know the negative uh, or the print is, is only as good as the negative and the exposure that's been made. So if you've you know tried to get the exposure right it follows that you want to do the best developing technique to get the best out of the negative and that's why I've used Pyrocat HD and used a semi-stand method. Pyrocat HD is an excellent developer, it's one of the best out there for stand and semi-stand development and by using a very dilute working solution, I only put two parts A and two parts B into 500 mils of water, uh, that extended development time with little agitation improves the accutance on the negative in other words, the micro contrast, and it just gives a, a an apparent look of a sharper image. Um, as I say, I'm not after a sharp image because it's a, a pinhole camera, but it does improve the quality of the negative with the micro contrast and the tonal range, etc. And uh, that's why I use the semi stand uh, development. Uh, it's an important part of of the uh, film process. You know, you take time to. Uh, uh, take your exposure measurements etc setting up the picture so it's just as important to think about the developing technique that you're going to use and I find that uh, on pictures such as this using a semi-stand development really improves the quality of the picture and the resultant print. So with that out of the way let's take a look at the negative I've developed it and it's dry and let's see if my spot meter is, is worked or it's uh, uh, failed. So this is the developed negative it's dry now ready to be uh, scanned and uh, looking at it, it looks pretty good uh, I've got the density that I required so the spot meter has worked and those petals should come uh, quite white uh, in the finished picture and we can also see that the uh, the edges have gone darker and that's caused by the pinhole vignetting so we'll uh, scan the negative and see how it turns out so this is the preview of the negative I've done with my Epson V800 uh, flatbed scanner. And if we look in the output tab, we can see I've got raw file selected. And this means that I'm creating a linear scan. In other words, I'm not making any adjustments within uh, view scan to alter the image. It's much like a, a raw file from a digital camera. It, the scanner is just reading the light values. Uh, if we go to the input tab you can see I'm going to scan at 3200 dpi and that will give you a nice uh, uh, big file to, to work with. So I'll scan the negative now and see what it looks like in uh, Photoshop. So uh, that's the finished scan. I've got the density that I wanted in the white petals and you can see in this picture how wide the 25mm uh, uh, pinhole camera is. You saw how it was set up but I've actually got my uh, foot in the picture 
and we've got the tripod leg there. But I don't mind, I think it adds more interest uh, to the picture itself. So let's uh, see the uh, picture in Photoshop and I'll compare this cam with the finished result. So I'll take you through the stages. This is the negative that came straight from ViewScan. Nothing's been done obviously in uh, ViewScan itself, it's a raw scan. And then we go to the actual conversion using Colour Perfect. And that's the conversion. And we can see from this that the exposure is pretty good there. And I've got the effect that I'm after. It just needs a little tweaking. And as we can see, I've got my foot in the picture. And there's a tripod leg. But I don't mind that because I think it makes it more of a, an interesting picture. Uh, and a talking point when it's, uh, you know, uh, printed and framed. And then this is the edited picture. And we can see from the conversion... I've just done a little bit of a contrast control, but not much. I'll just show you again. That's just a conversion, no editing. And that's the uh, edited picture. And this is the edited picture that I've toned, which I like to do with my pictures. You can just see the tone there. Let's look now at the picture in a frame, titled and signed. And then... From there, I'll show you the actual print itself, which I'm going to put on eBay for auction just to help to uh, support this channel. So this is the uh, finished picture, how it would look, mounted and framed. And I've entitled it Pinhole Daisies. The technical details are on the right hand side. And you know, I'm, I'm really pleased the way this uh, picture's turned out. The metering has worked uh, very well, uh, keeping the petals nice and bright and uh, they contrast so well with the darker background and where the pinhole camera has been etted, you know, darkening the edges. The pinhole camera, if you do take your time in composition, don't think that exposure is not important, it is. Try and pick the right developer for the subject that you're photographing and you can come up with some really lovely pictures, unique pictures, and it just goes to show that the pinhole camera is a very, very capable camera. Let's just uh, zoom into the picture and you can see it's not a sharp picture. I've added no sharpness on this image and as you've seen previously, very little editing. Nothing that you wouldn't do in a dark room. And the picture has got this apparent look of sharpness to it and that is created by the uh, Pyrocat HD uh, in the semi-stand method, creating this micro contrast. And I think if this picture was framed on a wall at a correct viewing distance, that you'd be hard pressed to tell that it was taken with a pinhole camera or say a normal camera with the lens. So as I say, I'm very pleased. I've got my foot in the picture. I was thinking about cropping that out, but I thought, no, I won't. Uh, it makes it quite a, a unique picture. And uh, if you had this picture hung on a wall, it would be a, a good uh, talking point. So we'll move on now and I'll show you the actual print that I'm going to put on eBay for auction uh, to help support the channel. So this is the print that I'm going to put on eBay uh, for auction. Uh, all the funds that I receive from print sales etc go back into me uh, uh, buying film and chemicals and it really does help uh, support the channel and for me to car carry on doing all this content. The uh, actual image size is 15 by 12 inches. Uh, it's printed on Epson cold press bright paper. It's a beautiful uh, matte paper with a very a lovely delicate texture to it. I leave a border, the white border, all around the print. It'll come to you like this uh, because it, it helps when you come to mount the picture. I'll sign it at this side and title it. Uh, it's called Pinhole Daisies and uh, I think it'll make a, a stunning print in a frame. It's a really really nice image because we've got this central brighter portion and as we go to the corners the venetting caused by the pinhole camera just gives this effect that you know it's the, the, the flowers in the center are bursting forward so as I say if you if you want to help support the channel go to the link in the description and I put a bid on the put a bid on this print right that's the end of the video I hope you enjoyed it I hope it's inspired you to go out with your pinhole camera experiment uh, buy a pinhole camera just try it it's a great way of, of taking pictures uh, can be very very rewarding now, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody who subscribed to my channel. Uh, I'm up to just over 7,000 subscribers now. 
Uh, also thanks to people that uh, make donations to the channel, those that buy my uh, prints uh, from eBay auctions. It, uh, you know, it all helps me to create this content. And also thank you all for making comments when I post a video. I think it just makes it uh, a more interesting place. So, if you have any uh, questions regarding pinhole photography, uh, just leave them below and I'll get back to you. If you like the video, please give me a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, as I always say, uh, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video.